Hi everyone, I'm Jared. I'm a senior support engineer here at BuildKite and a big fan of Terraform and infrastructure as code in general. I initially wrote our Terraform provider about three years ago uh, in my spare time to explore Go and Terraform. And it was adopted uh, early last year as the official BuildKite provider. And I joined BuildKite shortly after that. Now I get to work on it as part of my role here in between helping customers make the most of BuildKite. My talk today is for people wanting to learn how to use Terraform to manage their CI CD resources. Using Terraform, I'm going to show you how to create a pipeline, hook it up to GitHub to trigger builds and run those builds on your own Elastic CI stack within AWS. Uh, many of you might be familiar with BuildKite already, but for those of you who aren't, BuildKite is a CI CD platform that enables top engineering teams to build and deliver software at scale. Our hybrid model gives you ultimate flexibility and control with the best possible user experience. Our open source BuildKite agent runs on your infrastructure, giving you full control without limits. And you get insights into your builds and pipelines, measure and monitor your CI, CD, reliability and performance, and get observability for your test suite. All through BuildKite's web UI and well-documented APIs and robust plugin ecosystem. So let's get started with the demo. I've got an empty repo here where I've just configured the basics of Terraform. I'm going to use uh, S3 as the backend for state storage um, and also a DynamoDB lock table. These are sort of things you want to do when you're running Terraform from CI where things could be running in parallel to make sure they don't clobber each other. I've also configured the BuildKite provider version 0.11. Uh, and configured it here so it's going to be using my HashiTalk demo org in BuildKite and the API token is actually set using the environment variable BuildKite API token. To create an API token head over to BuildKite to your personal settings, API tokens and new API access token. Give it a description, uh, give it access to any organizations that you're going to be managing with Terraform it needs read and write permissions in the REST API to pipelines, and it also needs GraphQL API access. Uh, and then you can hit create a new token. Uh, that'll then take you to the next page where you can copy your token one time. It won't show you that token again, so be careful. And so the first thing we wanna do is create a pipeline. I like to call my Terraform files after the repository name. So I'm going to call it Hashi Talks Demo 2022. And if we open up that file, I'll paste in this snippet that I've generated already. Just walk you through it here. I'm going to call the pipeline HashiTalks Demo 2022. Uh, configure the repo URL to clone. Uh, the default branch is going to be main. And then the default steps are going to be to uplo upload the pipeline from the repository. Jumping back to the terminal so that we can apply this. All right, Terraform's finished applying that plan. The next thing we need to do is create an agent token so that we can start up an agent to be able to run the builds. Let's, let's do that now. Back inside the terminal, I'm going to create a buildkite.tf file that's going to house the agent token resource. Paste that in. This is going to create an agent token that we can then pass to the Elastic stack so that when it boots up agents, they can register to our organization. While we're here, let's create an instance of the Elastic Stack. This resource is going to use our Elastic Stack CloudFormation template to create a pool of agents so that we can run our builds. You can see here I've read I'm going to use the agent token created above, and I'm just going to boot up one instance on a T3 small. So now we can do another Terraform apply to create these resources. All right, here we go, it's finished applying. It's created an agent token and an instance of the Elastic Stack. You can even head back into our BuildKite organization and see that an agent is now running, ready to 
run some builds. Jumping back to the terminal, let's create a real simple uh, pipeline file. Just going to create it with one, one step, just to echo hello, just to prove it's working. So now we can add and commit that. Push it up. Now we can head back to BuildKite and trigger a new build. Here's that build we've got to green now. It's uploaded the pipeline and run all the steps. The next useful step is to connect BuildKite to GitHub so that when commits are pushed, it triggers a build automatically rather than having to click new build here. We're back in the terminal now. I want to open up our pipeline resource file so that I can add in some GitHub resources. So I've already created the repository in GitHub and I could import that into the Terraform state, but for now I'm just going to use a data source to look up that and then add a webhook. So here we, here's the webhook resource. I'm using the repository from the data source and connecting it to the BuildKite Pipeline's webhook URL. Uh, it needs to take uh, JSON and we want to validate SSL, so I want to disable insecure SSL. Make sure it's active, so it's actually going to send the webhook and it needs the deployment, push, and pull request events. Let's exit this and do a Terraform apply. So that's finished applying now. The next thing to do is commit those changes, push them up, and see that it triggers a build. Here's that build that was triggered from a webhook. It's nothing too interesting just yet, really. It's what we expected. Uh, now let's modify this pipeline so that we can actually get Terraform apply planning and applying from within BuildKite itself. So to do that, we're going to need to edit the steps that run. And run some Terraform things. Here's the pipeline file I'm using for this demo. The first step generates a Terraform plan and writes that plan to an artifact. And then it blocks the pipeline to make sure the plan gets manual review. You might want to do this because Terraform will, will likely be touching production resources and might delete or add things you don't intend on. Uh, and then once someone unblocks the pipeline, the last step will download the plan from the artifacts and apply it. Let's commit this to the repository and trigger a build. Here's that triggered build. You can see it's now blocked, waiting for manual review of the plan. If we have a look at the plan here. You can see not much is going to change. Because I've hard-coded the agent access token, um, it's always going to think there's a change there because it's a... Um, private very private parameter um, but this is this is in a state where we could apply this so we could unblock the pipeline let it apply it'll end up doing really nothing in cloud formation since it's the same token here we go the pipeline's finished applying the plan now and have a have a drill down into the log output see that it was updating the cloud formation resource and it's now finished so that concludes the demo. Uh, just to recap what we've done, we've configured Terraform with a remote state, added in the required providers. We've created a BuildKite pipeline, hooked it up to GitHub through a webhook so that when commits are pushed, it triggers a build. And we've also created a Elastic Stack instance so that builds can run in AWS. Now going on to extend this further for sort of best practices, uh, what you would likely want to do is put the agent token into an SSM parameter. Uh, that's fully supported by the Elastic Stack. Uh, and that'll also improve the plan so it won't think there's a difference every time. Uh, you might want to play around with your instance 
type and how many agents you have. Uh, of course, you've got to manage your policies. You might not want admin access, or maybe you do if Terraform is configuring everything. You probably want more than one instance as well. You want it to auto scale. So that was a whirlwind demo. I'm going to leave it there and walk you through some tips and tricks to help you productionize your own Terraform project. The first thing I would do is remove the hard-coded agent token parameter in the CloudFormation and move it to an SSM parameter. That's already supported in the Elastic Stack. So all you'd want to do is create a new AWS SSM resource and reference that in your CloudFormation parameters. We've only created one pipeline linked to one repository with this demo, but in reality, you probably have multiple pipelines and multiple repositories that you want to link together. Uh, so you could either import those uh, into the Terraform state and any new ones you can create fresh. Another improvement that you could do is to create a module out of uh, whatever kind of groupings that make sense for your use case. Uh, one such example might be um, a module that creates a pipeline and a repository and hooks them up with the webhook all in one. So that rather than having to create three resources every time, if your team is making a new project, uh, they just need to use the module and set the, the correct properties. Just to summarize what we've achieved here, using Terraform and our BuildKite provider, we've created a BuildKite pipeline, hooked it up to a GitHub repository through webhooks so that when commits are pushed, it'll trigger a build. And we've even created an instance of the Elastic CI stack uh, to provide us some agents to run builds. Thanks to HashiCorp for hosting. A special shout out to Mel and Mitch for helping me put this together and doing some editing. Uh, I'm going to put this repository on GitHub if you wanted to check it out for any concepts we used here. Um, and for more information, be sure to check out the Terraform documentation and the BuildKite docs in general. And reach out to us in our BuildKite community Slack, the BuildKite forum, or via email. And give us a follow on Twitter. Thanks for coming. See you on the internet.